So this demo is about showing how Kubeflow and Kubernetes together can make machine learning really easy, scalable, and portable. So this demo is about the operational efficiency that you gain by adopting Kubernetes and Kubeflow. So the, the sample use case we have taken here is that of like predicting sentiments associated with reviews. Um, and so here's a very simple web app, right? Like let's go, let's go over some of the reviews that are sample reviews that are listed here. The first one says, uh, it's a typical McDonald's, food was typical, employees were typical, everything is like typical. So it, there's really not, nothing positive about this review, and so we would expect it to be a negative review, right? You don't want to highlight it in your restaurant website as, as one of the premier reviews. Um, and the second one here, it's, it says it's good, uh, the service is good, overall they do a good job. So this seems to be a pretty positive review, so we should probably be highlighting that. Whereas on the right side here, um, it says, really excited to hear of this restaurant uh, coming to Toronto, and so on, so on. Service here is not great. Um, so it's, it's not a review that you want to highlight, so it's probably a negative review. So what would you expect? Let's say you throw this uh, task at your engineer, and then your engineer just builds something, some, some back-end system to, to classify them as positive and negative. Let's see what the engineer has built. Turns out, what the engineer has built doesn't, doesn't meet what the humans expect. Right? Like it's, it's literally classifying them um, incorrectly. Let's go look at the code that the engineer has used. Hmm, this is not good code. It's like, it's like really, it's really dumb code. Like, I don't know how that got checked in, but any case, it's there. So now let's go improve it and let's go fix it. So this is where machine learning comes to the rescue. There's, there's quite a few uh, machine learning models that you can use to solve these sort of language problems. And Tensor to Tensor happens to be one really popular model that can be used for lots of different applications um, like language modeling, sentiment analysis, summarization, and so on, right? Um, and so sentiment analysis is, is one application for this model. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to use Kubeflow. We're going to use this Tensor to Tensor pre-existing model, and we're going to operationalize that. We're going to train that model using uh, data, public data that's provided by Yelp. Um, and then what we're going to do is then we're going to deploy uh, that model to a Kubernetes cluster and then see if I can improve this web app uh, to, to become smarter and, and, and make the right kind of predictions. So at this point, I'm going to switch to my terminal here where I'm going to run the demo. So the first stage of the demo is that I'm going to switch to Minikube. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy, um, deploy Kubeflow to my local Minikube cluster. Kubeflow comes pre-packaged with a few components. I'm going to show you like what components exist in there. And you're also going to see uh, that Kubeflow abstracts out a lot of different Kubernetes constructs that you have to put together in order to build applications that data scientists and ML practitioners can consume. Uh, they find it really hard to consume Kubernetes directly, so uh, Kubeflow sort of acts as a glue between the apps that data scientists like and the, and the infrastructure efficiency that Kubernetes uh, provides you. Um, so I'm switching to my local Minikube context here. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy Kubeflow locally. So it's as simple as running one simple command. Then the next thing is I'm going to show Jupyter Notebooks. So this is part of Kubeflow where you have Jupyter Notebooks that are built in. Uh, so you can go ahead and like uh, log in and, and create your own notebooks. There are many pre-canned images. Uh, you can choose different CPU. You can choose different memory, and then you can also choose GPUs if you happen to have it, but Minikube doesn't support it yet, so you probably can't lot use GPUs locally yet. But you get, a, you get a pretty good set of configurations and you can bring your own images. So what this provides you is it provides you a local uh, notebook environment through which you can iterate locally and build models interactively locally. But you're not going to use notebooks now. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to continue uh, training our model using command line. And, and specifically what we're going to do is we're going to use a TF job operator that's packaged as part of Kubeflow. The TF job operator lets you do distributed training uh, and single load training in a really easy portable way. So similar to how you define a deployment or a job in Kubernetes, you can, you can, you can define a TensorFlow job using the TF job operator. And then the TensorFlow job, what it does is takes your TensorFlow application packages containers and sets up the runtime environment that TensorFlow needs in order to make it work in a distributed setting and in a local setting and abstracts all of that. So I'm going to configure my TensorFlow 
model to, to run locally. I've set the data to be available as locally and I've set local training to be true. And the model is now deployed. I'm going to check if the, if the training jobs are running. They seem to be running. And the next thing is I'm going to check if the model is actually running by looking at the logs. Okay, looks like the model is running, but I'm going to stop here with local training because it's going to take a long time. It's probably going to take, take a couple of days for local training to complete. But the point of training locally is not to, is not to uh, build a model, but it's rather to just make sure that my model works. As soon as I know my model works, I have the cloud to the rescue, right? Now I can switch to the cloud and use Elastic Compute there, and that's what we're going to do next. And you're going to use the same Kubeflow framework to do that. So I'm going to switch to a GKA cluster, and I'm going to show you the GKA cluster that I have pre-provisioned. So here is a GKA cluster. Uh, this cluster has GPUs and TPUs already attached, so I pre-provisioned it. Uh, it's very easy to pro provision GKE clusters with TPUs and GPUs. It's like literally running two commands, um, and you get like, drivers and everything pre-installed. So I have like GPUs attached here, uh, and TPUs are available from all nodes, and I also like pre-provisioned a TPU here, um, and the TPU is running TensorFlow uh, version 1.7. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my terminal and I'm going to switch context and switch to this GKE cluster. And I'm going to deploy Kubeflow to GKE. And once I've deployed Kubeflow, then I'm going to deploy my model to GKE. So here we're deploying uh, Kubeflow to GKE. The next step is let me deploy the model. So I have to change the model parameters such that it can run in the cloud. I've enabled GPUs for the cloud, and I've also like enabled, uh, set the data directory to be on GCS, uh, and I've also disabled local training. So once the model is deployed, uh, next off, like in, in addition to GPUs, you can also use TPUs in Google Cloud. And uh, now I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to deploy the same model, but this time with TPUs. Um, so here you go, like I've, I've configured TPUs, a few parameters to make the model point at a TPU, and then the models are now deployed on TPUs as well. Now we're going to wait for the pods to be running. So I'm going to switch to the GKE UI, um, and I'm going to filter on my demo namespace. Um, and then once I filter there, I'm going to check whether my training pods are running. So it turns out my tra training pods are running. You see here that you have a distributed cluster running. So you have two workers and a master and a parameter server. These are TensorFlow concepts. Don't worry about it if you don't know it. And there's also a TPU uh, training job that's running. So if I go into the TPU training job, um, if we go into the TPU training job, then you would know that the TPU training uh, job is running. And then there's a GPU job here. Um, and then the GPU job is running, and you can see here that GPU memory and GPU duty cycle are also being shown here for you. Um, and the pod is running, and you can go in here and you can see the logs. Uh, the training is actually going on already, and it's, sh it's saving checkpoints and so on. So once we go back, um, then, okay, so training is going on, but training is going to take quite a while. Uh, what can we do meanwhile? So in addition to that, we also get TensorBoard. Uh, I forgot to mention this. Uh, you get TensorBoard that's going to help you track the progress of your training, uh, both locally and, and in the cloud. I, what I've done here is like I have, I'm showing you TensorBoard graphs that uh, based on pre-trained models. So I ran through training, and this is what you would see. So what you see here is the GPUs. You see about training rate of about like three, roughly like 2.5 steps per second. And then in the case of TPUs, uh, if you scroll down, you see like a much higher learning rate. Um, and so this is to give you a rough idea of like what sort of hardware you might use and in any case like Kubernetes and Kubeflow can, uh, can work with both of them. So now, now that we have gone through the training process and now that training is done, uh, the next off is we can't wait for training to complete. Um, and so what we're going to do now is like we're going to take a pre-trained model and deploy it to the same GKE cluster. And then uh, we're going to see if the if a restaurant uh, sentiment an analysis UI can perform better. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy a pre-trained model locally, uh, as in sorry to my GKE cluster. And once that model is deployed, now I can go back and see if that model is running. 
So I'm going to refresh and my model is running. It's the pods are running. So let's switch back to my UI. So I have the UI here. Uh, it did with like local classification. It did not do well as we would expect it. So now let's see if it does well with the machine learning model. Yay! It does well. Like it's it's classifying the first and the third review correctly as being negative, and it's classifying the second review as being positive. So this should this demo should have shown you how the overall pipeline for uh, for machine learning can be simplified with Kubeflow and Kubernetes together, where your infrastructure concerns and like application packaging concerns are taken care of for you, and you focus on building great machine learning packages that are reusable um, and making like applied machine learning really, really easy for the rest of the world. Thank you.